Let's go get them again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my mega haul, mini mega haul. We'll see. We got seven bottles to talk about. Um, they're already unboxed because they got split, but we're going to talk about that. But four, four <laughs> out of the seven fragrances in this haul are discontinued. Oh. The D word. People are going to log off. They're going to get mad at me. They're like, how can you make a video on discontinuing fragrances? Get out of here. We don't want you on the Robes Away channel. <laughs> I love finding gems and sharing it with all of you. I'm not saying that these are gems, but we're going to talk about them. And fragrances that are hard to find. That is part of the journey. Uh, maybe not as a fragrance reviewer to get hits. But <laughs> it's part of my journey. I like to share it. So let me share with you what I got in the mail, coming up next. What's going on, fragrance family? Welcome to the Robes Away channel. I'm your host, Mark. Today we're unboxing, sorta, no, not really, and giving a first impression on paper on seven freshly split scents from my super amazing splitter in the States, my man Robert. Uh, this guy always, and I mean always, delivers. And I have, he can attest, I am a pain in his bum because <laughs> I request fragrances and I help him. We, we do the research together, but uh, I asked for some stuff that's long gone, discontinued, and I have a certain price point that I got to hit. And from scents that are also only released in other countries that are not available in North America to discontinued gems, to indie, to designer, to niche. He caters to my taste. Best splitter in the world, which is sometimes hard to do. So I appreciate him. Because of him, I can get my nose on all seven of these. Now, if I didn't have him, Maybe we're not. We may see some unboxings on some of these, but Robert, if you're watching, merci beaucoup. Thank you, sir. You are a gem to me. My best friend, my BFF. <laughs> now, if you're new here, thanks for watching. Subscribe, support the channel, hit that bell. What are you waiting for? I'm also all over social media under my YouTube handle, Robes08. And on other social media, I'll, I'll post my Saturday days on Instagram. I will show like a haul like this that I, I did a few months back and you'll know that the video is coming. Um, so definitely if you want to see more of me, go follow me on all my social media. Now talking about social media, yeah, you can follow me on Facebook, might as well, but you can head over on FGN, Fragrance Guru Nation, which is also my fragrance group on Facebook where we're up to 18,000 members. What do we do there? Well, we discuss fragrances, of course. You'll never miss a new release on there. People uh, jump on those. They'll say when they're, they're getting released. Uh, people are talking about already splitting them, uh, things like that. And also, of course, people buy, sell, swap, uh, fragrance split too. Um, so you can get some stuff for cheaper. You can sell your stuff if you'd like to. And of course, you're gonna discover new YouTubers. They post their, their recent videos on FGN. So you can click on those. Basically a great source of information if you're in this hobby like I am. So now that all that, that stuff is gone we got seven bottles to talk about they're all unboxed so this is not an unboxing sorry i lied um obviously they've been split for me so i'm not going to unbox them um so some of these bottles are most of them are half split i always take half the juice with the original bottle um sweet robert does his thing and some of them i just buy outright just because i want them so now i'm going to get my desk i'm going to get set up I'm gonna sit down and we're going to we're gonna take a look at some juice. Let's go. So here we are sitting down at the table, something a little different on this channel. Let me know if you like me doing these unboxings, especially these mega hauls. I like to kind of sit down and test out a bunch of fragrances and you guys can see what I got. You already see what I'm getting now. You've seen it from the thumbnail, but uh, I'm kind of liking this corner. Um, this is my high-end niche, uh, even though Hermes is a designer, it, it costs buku buku dollars <laughs> in these Gatelains here, but it's my designer realm here. Kind of wanted to split them apart. And uh, yeah, we got seven fragrances to sniff out. I like these kind of videos. It just makes me run through the trough and we're gonna go from and go that way. Um, so we'll start with the Cartier. 
Um, I just did a bunch of Cartier Declaration, uh, Pop the Cherries. I did Declaration de Soir, Declaration Parfum. Um, so if you haven't checked out those uh, Pop the Cherry videos, which is a first impression uh, on skin for a few days, go check those out. I'm a big fan of the House of Cartier, um, especially the Roadster series, but Declaration is good too. Um, so this one right here is from their Eau de Cartier series. This is Zeste de Soleil. Um, I had... This is 2013 release, discontinued. Uh, I had no idea how good this flanker was until Chad from A Gentleman's Journey. Um, so what up, Chad, fellow Canadian? Um, he came to visit me. He brought a bottle uh, for us to sniff for video. Uh, I sniffed like about a dozen scents, including some niche ones. And this was the one that I said, this was the standout. I almost stole his bottle, to be quite honest. Um, it... Um, what did it bring? What I remember, it brought a hard, uh, hard, and I mean hard, authentic citrus opening. It was very authentic. It's got some fruity tones, um, but I had to cop it. It's a very thin scent from what I remember, but it was discontinued uh, way back when. A little harder to find, but if you have the knowledge and, and you got time and you got patience, um, you'll find one for, they're, they're still cheap. They're not crazy prices. Some discontinued fragrances are st stupid crazy. This might be one of those, um, but uh, this one is not. Uh, however, it uh, doesn't bring much to the table as far as if you're looking for projection longevity. If you're looking for something that is complex, this may not be your thing. Um, this is a very thin scent made for the summer. So let's remind me of this, uh, this fragrance and this introduction, of course, and I'll let you know. And again, these were all split by my splitter. As you can see, they're all around 50, 50%. Uh, um, there's one, of course, this one right here that has a little bit more. I bought that one basically outright. Um, so this one, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, sharp citrus, beautiful, beautiful, authentic citrusy opening. Uh, only a handful of scents. Uh, can open like this. Um, there isn't much on the market and that's why I was so blown away because this introduction is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's named aptly uh, when it says Zest de Soleil. Zest is right. Um, it gives what, it has a grapefruit opening, um, some yuzu, some passion fruit, um, all mixed up together. A little bit of mintiness too that gives you a, that mentholated, uplifting feel. So it gives you a real shot in the arm in the opening. And um, like if I had to put this in a league of something else, like a Pomelo Paradis from Atelier Cologne. So if you like that, Pamplulune from Guerlain, from Aqua, uh, Aqua Ligoria line, something like that. Um, very, very good company <laughs> for an opening. Um, I can't wait to put it more on my skin. I'm assuming there isn't going to be much of a backbone to it. I don't care. Um, I like these type of fragrances and sometimes you need some of these in your collection. This is a very solid release from the house of Cartier. Moving on, Spice Bomb. And then there were six. Uh, let's take a look at Victor and Rolf's Spice, Spice Bomb Eau Fraiche um, from, of course, Victor and Rolf. Um, a 2014 release. So this one, again, another discontinued. Uh, pro tip, all of these have been discontinued on the side of of this table. So another discontinued scent. Uh, when you hear through the grapevine that a scent is getting axed and you have all the previous bottles in the collection, um, it kind of makes you want to pull the trigger as a collector. That's where I'm, I'm at with this one. These Spice Bomb releases um, don't really dip much in price. They get discontinued or it doesn't really matter. Um, it feels like they hold their pricing. You're not going to find like Spice Bomb Fresh here uh, for like $30 online. Um, it really doesn't happen. It's still holding its weight. It it was steadily at around $100 Canadian. It never budged. It got axed. It never budged. Usually it budged down. So people start buying up the old stock so they can remove it. No. Um, this one never really interested me. I like the Spice Bomb uh, DNA. I like Spice Bomb. I got the Spice Bomb Extreme. Uh, but this one never really... I never really paid attention to it. However, when I heard it was discontinued and I saw on YouTube, there's a few people that really, really like this release. I got intrigued and I got it split. Pretty much. 
So let's sniff out this discontinued juice and see if it's worth your time. Um, she's fresh. Uh, it's got some freshness to it. Um, it definitely, definitely smells like a spice bomb release. So it doesn't stray away too much from the original. Smells basically like a fresher take of the original. It basically says, what it says on the bottle is what you're gonna get on the strip here. Um, it has a generic grapefruit opening. There's some watery aspects here splashed on to the original Spice Bomb, kind of watered down. It kind of works. I didn't think it would, but it kind of works to be honest. I like the blend. Definitely the citrus is stronger than the splash of ocean or oce oceanic watery take. Um, so it's more of a citrus up top with that Spice Bomb DNA in the background. Pretty straightforward as a release, to be quite honest. Eh. A good flanker that's going to get somewhere for me, honestly, so I'm not poo-pooing it, but not a banger. Um, I don't think, uh, as far as, you know, if, I don't know how much it was, like, let's say retail it in Canada, it was around 120 for this big bottle, I think, Canadian, give or take, we'll say that. Um, that's a pretty hefty price to pay. I'd rather get the original Spice Bomb for that, even the Extreme, this one. It's good. And it may hit one of my top 20 lists, but it's not going to go for the top number, like top five. No, 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 no. It may go in at number 15 or maybe number 19, something like that. But I like it. It, it. it really does do a different twist, a fresher twist to the original Spice Bomb. And it still has that original kick from Spice Bomb, which is pretty nice. Not a bad release, but... Nothing crazy here, not hype train worthy, in my personal opinion. Now, moving on to an older release, a 1990s release, 97. What about Adam from Yelp? Oh, this release. Um, ooh, this was one of those that um, ever since I started my YouTube channel, uh, I have like a list of fragrances back in the 90s that got discontinued. And this one is one of those that's just been steadily been there. Like another one that I haven't gotten yet. There's a lot of them that I did get, like a Dolce Cabana by Gucci Envy, uh, fragrances like that, uh, M7, um, I've gotten my hands on. And I'm patient, um, but like a Gucci Rush for, for men, I still haven't gotten my hand on. It's one of those that I'm just, I'm just patient. I'll, I'll get it eventually. But this is one of those that I wasn't really working hard to, to try to find it. I, I, it has a cult following online, to be quite honest. Um, but this bottle uh, does represent a big part of my journey. This is something that I pride myself in that I absolutely love doing. And it kind of gets my juices flowing, no pun intended, in this hobby. Um, this is the kind of stuff that a true hobbyist of fragrances will not just keep going new releases, new releases, new releases. That's good for the YouTube channel. But as a true frag head, you're looking in the past to things that you've missed things that have a cult following. Why? Why is it so popular? Why are people still talking about a Yope-based release uh, still now in the 2020s? I couldn't understand it. Um, no disrespect to What About Adam, but I was I didn't get it. But I wanted to, to see what the other people were seeing. So today, we're going to find that so out. So by the way, before I get into What About Adam, um, I just wanted to let you guys know which ones I blind bought. I, I don't advertise uh, on, on asking or telling you guys to do the same thing I do. Um, I like to live dangerously, even with super expensive releases. Um, but I've been in this game for so long um, that I know a lot of things as far as branding, uh, the nose behind them, um, and, and what their strengths are. Like a get a lane release i know what their lines are and which ones i will gravitate towards um, i do my research um even like something like this um they're very pricey but i blind bought you know i blind bought basically this section i haven't smelt these at all um so but these one are including this one this is a blind buy this i've smelt in a sephora i just sprayed it i was like nope not worth retail bye <laughs> And this one, I obviously smelt with Chad. Um, so this one, I'm kind of excited because it, it represents a part of my journey. And obviously this, actually this haul kind of shows where my journey is, right? Um, I, I don't poo-poo on, you know, discontinued releases, fresh releases, uh, fragrances back in the 90s to um, indie brands, niche brands, high-end designer brands, uh, 
so on and so forth. I'm all over the map. Um, this is supposed to be a tomato leaf uh, release and um, let's smell it. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> one word, surprising. Um, that's got to be the word of the day with What About Adam. This has the reputation as one, if not the best, tomato leaf based scent on the market. Off the strength of the smell, off the strip, I will agree with the hype train in regards to What About Adam. This is a best in class tomato leaf. Um, beautiful mix of tomato leaf. Um, we got that uplifting mint in here. So there's a green combo here with a beautiful grapefruit note just lurking around. There's a nice vegetal aspect here. That's on point. And smelling something so authentic with the Yolp uh, sticker on the bottle kind of makes it think, make you go, what happened here? <laughs> Why is everything else so synthetic and syrupy sweet from Yolp? And then they did this. It plays tricks on me because I really didn't, I, I didn't believe the reviews, honestly. <laughs> but a very solid tomato leaf release, um, possibly the best in the game. Very happy. Oh, very, oh, we get to do another airplane. Very happy <laughs> that, being a rookie here, very happy that I got this one in my collection now. Now moving on to the more expensive side of the table here. Uh, we're gonna start with Rania J. Um, this is a line that you may not know of. Um, obviously I own one of the brand, now two. Um, I own, uh, the first one that I purchased was the famed Ombre Lou, uh, which is a amber-based release from Rania J. It was a blind buy, I was blown away. And then I started looking into the line and I was like, I need to get the whole line. So we're starting the Pokemon section right now. We're, we're collecting them all. Uh, we start one by one in mega hauls like this, and we're just gonna continue to purchase them. Um, I said to myself that this one right here was gonna be next. I wanted to check out their leather-based one, which is this one right here, which is Cuir Andalou. Um, again, split to 50%, blind buy, not sure what I'm going to get, but if it's anywhere near what Ombre Lou did with Amber, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a happy man and I love leather-based fragrances and I, I feel like this one's going to be a banger. Well, it's time to dip into this one. Let's smell Cuir Andalou. And again, big fan. If you have to try out one indie or niche, ooh niche brand um i highly recommend this rania j line um this or uh, this line i feel has a lot of promise and i can't wait to talk oh this is this is this is strong this is this is rough oh yes um now the note breakdown i noticed and that's what got me excited about this release it has castorium uh, oud and leather in the note breakdown. That's a, that's sold <laughs> for me. Um, and I always think big, bold, and scary, which I love, but at the same time in the note breakdown, I did see a Neroli Rose and Violet Iris as some softer notes. So I was going to see, okay, what, what's going to come out the big, bold ones. And the opening gives me a dark leather, <laughs> a dark leather release. Um, as it would say in the name, it is your primary note in this release. It has a little bite, but the softer counterparts are there to balance things well. Um, the blend, outstanding here. And I mean outstanding. And R Rania J, um, oh, what a nose. Um, these two releases that I own, absolutely gorgeous. Um, this leather has a little bit of bite, but blended perfectly that it's not a big macho crazy leather. And I love my big bold leathers, but this, it does have it. It has some bite to it, but it's paired so well. There's complexity in this one. Um, the leather seems like it comes out of a tannery, to be quite honest. It has that brand new leathery touch. There's some smoky tendencies, but they're also a buttery smooth Iris sandalwood combo here. One of the best blends with a leather note, in my opinion. Um, now it's to move on to the tobacco-based scent, um, Tea Habanero. I think that's next in the uh, uh, the crosshairs. I need to get that one. There's a new two called Oud Assam. 
<laughs> yeah, that one's in the crosshairs too. Um, yeah, this is a house. This is beautiful. Um, this is a house that you need to check out. If you got the same nose as me, um, Ambrelu, banger. This one, banger. Uh, crazy. Let's continue with the Pokemon grabbing, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna go to uh, the tobacco based one habanero and we'll see how that one goes and then we'll move on to the oud i'm sure they're all bangers so moving on and uh, i guess i was on my um my leather kick because the next one's hermes essence uh hermes and this is cuir d'ange of course a leather based uh, release um obviously hermes known for their leather goods and of, cor of course with elena at the helm and of course nagel taking over um i do want to collect all Elena's. I've said this on record before that I want to collect them like Pokemons. And uh, Creel Downs came available uh, for a really good price. I think it was 100 USD. Split that, half the cost, pff, sold. Easy with the leather cap. Usually the testers are around that price, but that, that was a steal for this thing and I've been looking for it high and low. So I can't wait to delve into this release. So this one, by the way, is an Elena release, uh, not an Agel release. Um, so uh, let's see what the master did with the note of leather. And I'm sure he did a a, a greatly blended one. I, I'm not expecting anything big and bold because even in the name it says Creole d'Ange, which is Angel's Leather, which I'm assuming it's going to be a soft pillowy leather. But let's delve into this one. Oh, yep. Interesting use of florals in this one. Yep. Um, think brand new Hermes handbag. Sure. Um, it has a... It's a soft leather, as I came to think. I, I know I know Elena fairly well. He's not going to do a big leather like this with, uh, you know, big bold notes. He might put some, some spices in it because they, he likes doing that. But no, this is... Um, this one smells way more polished than this. This smells like an expensive handbag, basically. Um, he definitely utilized florals to soften the blow on the leather on this one. It smells like you just walked into an Hermes store. All the beautiful new leather goods just hang in there. Um, not much bite to the leather here. Expertly blended. Um, I like that. Um, you can't you know, pinpoint certain notes here and there. You could just tell that there's some florals or some powdery aspects here that kind of makes it give you the imagery of a brand new handbag. Um, there's like a suede-like quality to this leather. Um, I even get like a soapy clean quality in this release. Uh, heliotrope, yeah, definitely. I think that's the use of, of a floral in this thing. Absolutely gorgeous, a very upscale leather. And um, you go from biker dude, uh, crazy leather, to a high-end <laughs> Hermes handbag leather. Beautifully done by Monsieur Elena. And uh, I love my leather-based fragrances. And as you can tell, um, just because you have one leather-based scent does not mean that you, that's the end of the search of the journey, depending on, on who you are. But I absolutely love delving into the different sides of a note that I absolutely love, leather. Um, Elena did his thing again. So here we are at the tail end of uh, this haul. The two Guerlains, um that have been on my wish list since they've been released, actually. Um, it's just that maybe others took precedence in regards to my purchasing. Um, and I never got to them. They got, um, in the case of Miri Delir here, a 2012 release, um, that got, that got discontinued. Um, but I've been, I've just been kind of ignoring um, Lari La Matière as a line. Um, I, I got all the heavy hitters, at least what I think, but I needed a few additions and I was kind of ignoring them because I was looking at other sides of Gettling. Um, as you know, if you're a follower of my channel, you know that I probably purchased a good two dozen Gettling releases from different lines. La La Matiara has been severely ignored by me. So you're gonna see a couple more of these maybe in the near future. So personally, I know this line isn't the most popular in the community, to be quite honest, uh, but secretly, uh, I hate no, I don't hate to admit it, but it is mine. Uh, Tonka Imperial, Spiritus du Blevenet, 
alone those two uh, make any other line from Gatelain, um just ridiculous to me. Um, those two are the pinnacles of the tonka bean and the vanilla. And those are two notes that I absolutely love and they kill them both. Um, so basically, uh, Speedy 2's Double Vanille is the best vanilla in the game, in my personal opinion, and Tonka Imperial is the best tonka bean based, in my opinion. Um, this line is absolutely, and it's funny because they all resemble each other. They have the, the familiar sweetness um, that they use. Um, so automatically, this line is a monster, in my opinion, and a lot of people disagree with that just because artistically, um, they're very similar to each other. But and then you look at Quiero Beluga, um, among others, uh, a great, 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 great line. Um, anyway, I'm looking for. I'm really looking forward to smelling this one. This one was absolutely hard to find when I saw that some of them were getting sold on eBay. It was around four or five hundred dollars Canadian. So um, this one did not come cheap. So Miri Dilir. Um, when I, again, this is a blind buy, when I thought about this release, I thought, okay, um, there's incense and myrrh in the uh, note breakdown. Um, so I was thinking, okay, there's going to be some resin in here, maybe some smoke in this release. Um, now, this line is, of course, known for its sweetness. So a sweet, smoky, resinous scent sounds good to me. But I don't know. I don't know that Gerlain would go that way with this release. So you never know. Um, there's a reason why it got discontinued. So let's sniff this one out. And uh, again, this one did not get split. Um, I just straight up, uh, I think what happened was it was an eBay user, somebody that wasn't shipping to Canada. And my guy just did his thing. I just threw him some money and I went, here, fix the problem. <laughs> Love you, Robert. Um, off the top, it smells like a, a Lare et la Matière release. Um, it doesn't go too far away uh, from what they're known for. They're buttery, they're creamy, they're decadent, um, they're white. Um, I always think of white or a resinous brown color. Um, there's a nice apricot note in here. A little bit of spice in this release too. It has a little bit of flavor. Um, a lot of these Lare et la Matière is just straight up sweetness. Um, it has a little bit of the you know, complexity to them, but um, it has a licorice-like opening. And with all these notes together, it has a powdery aspect, vanillic, yes. It's got a little bit of patchouli, some resins in the back end. Um, but with all these Lari La Matiaros, and I can sniff it here, I can see why they could get tiresome. They start being around the same vein. Anyone expecting something huge in regards to myrrh or incense or smoke will be heavily disappointed with this release, at least from my initial impression here. However, with every disappointment, there's a silver lining. And I gotta say, this is a solidly built scent, at least off this strip. Um, you know, it's not a disappointment, you know, when you put this beside a Cuyo Beluga, Spitzu du Bleveni, Tonka Imperial, along the line, Bois d'Armani, all of them, um, it it's built the same way, which is never a disappointment. At the end of the day, this is, you know, I'm looking forward to peeling the layers of this one because they have a complexity that not a lot of people talk about. They, they feel like these may be really simple scents. They might be on the outskirts, but on the insides, they have a lot more to, to show. And this one has, I assume, will have a lot of layers. I'm kind of sad that this one is discontinued. Um, I think it's a solid release. Great addition to my collection. Definitely is going to be one of those uh, prized possession. Uh, Mir et Delir uh, from Guerlain. Now, last but not least, uh, Oriental uh, Brûlé uh, from the House of Guerlain. Um, this is from their Elixir uh, Charnel lineup, a line that I think has been pretty much forgotten. It never really took off, to be quite honest, I think. Um, this is my third from the line. Um, this line is obviously known for Gourmet Coquet, uh, a gourmand-based uh, fragrance, which is absolutely gorgeous. I'm very decadent, though. You, you need to have a sweet tooth, and I do have a sweet tooth. So um, this one is more obviously looking at an oriental release that has maybe brûlé means burnt, so maybe like a burnt sugar. Um, I like that. Um, this one was obviously split. Um, this was was hard to find. You can still get this release um, at the Guerlain Boutique, but you're going to be paying the big bucks for it. This one and the Mir is what I call snipes in, 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 my, in my journey that I'm like, I snipe those up. 
Um, those have been on my list for years and uh, great additions. Both of them, Gelly, uh is a brand that it's almost never finished my list. It's just like, oh my God, I need to get this one and that one. Um, so this one right here, Oriental, uh, Oriental Brûle. Um, again, I, I'm thinking it's going to be sweet. It's going to be vanillic. Um, it's going to be, it might be Oriental. Um, and it should have some sort of smoky character. So let's, uh, let's sniff this one. And, uh, oh, <laughs> save the best for last, didn't I? Um, yeah, my sweet tooth is happy with this release. Um, oh, wow. Mm, yeah, it's gourmand. 100% gourmand. It fits with gourmand, okay. Um, Tonka heavy, vanillic heavy, great almond note from the Tonka off the bat. Gelain does a great almond note. Uh, think Tonka Imperial. Um, sticky, resinous Styrax. Here's the star of the show. It's sticky, ambery, gourmand uh, feel to the fragrance. Um, very smooth at the same time. It has that buttery aspect that a La de la Matière would have, but very sticky and resinous. So it has a little more character. It has a little more oomph than some of these. Um, it has, can I say it's close cousin of Tonka Imperial? I'm, I'm feeling that Tonka Imperial DNA in this release uh, without the cherry. Um, replace the cherry with some clementines here with a sticky vanillic tone of Spiritus du Bleu Vanille, very gourmandish. Um, it taken the gourmand tendencies of gourmand coquet. So it kind of takes a little bit of Tonka Imperial, Spiritus du Bleu Vanille and gourmand coquet, which are three excellent, uh, <laughs> three excellent sweet tooth uh, releases from Gatelaine, some of their best actually. And put them in a pot, shake them up and you have this one. Um, now those are my three favorite gourmands from the brand. And this one is reminding me of all three. Um, I'm looking at this bottle right now <laughs> on camera and saying, why did I split this one? I should have just bought the whole damn bottle. Um, wow. Yeah, this is beautiful. Um, it just has that just enough stickiness. Um, I, I just love that resinous, sticky, vanillic, Tonka bean, Styrax, um, almond-like quality uh, to this release. Um, beautiful, beautiful release. Um, so very happy with this haul. Again, thank you, Robert, uh, the man, the myth, the legend um, that has uh, taken care of, of my request as far as uh, discontinued designer releases. Um, to some indie niche, uh, some high-end designer releases, and some gems that I'm so happy to have in my collection that people are asking outrageous prices for. <laughs> um, so again, thank you to Robert, and again, uh, thank you to all of you. Hopefully you enjoyed um, these longer haul videos. Sometimes I like to do these, especially the ones that I get split like this. I don't feel like doing a uh, individual unboxing or video on these and just kind of get them done. Um, I'll get a pop the cherry on every single one of these. We'll go through the trough. Um, that'll be, of course, uh, later on. But uh, again, appreciate uh, all of you tuning in. And as always, a greater pour of fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Thanks for supporting.